Shalom, Aki. How about Shemia Shai Berkatha? Shalom, Aron. How about Shemia Shai Berkatha? Ah, Salaki, I just sent you an email. Uh, you might need to check your check your email right quick and see if you got it. I'm gonna need you to to read that for me. Shalom, shalom. I'm Officer Fifty Zabaja, the ISUPK. Started out one west. Started out one twenty fifth, one west Harlem, New York, under Commander General Johanna. This is the ISUPK history class, and we're going to be doing this history class every Monday at 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. I got a, I got a good story for us to read about, about Canadian history that we're going to read, and we're going to go into a few scripture breakdowns. So as soon as, uh, as, soon as we get it, we'll, uh, we're going to go into that. And so in Canada, Canada is a country that... Let me just fix my headband right quick. Let me make sure I'm looking good. Slovakia. <laughs> Canada is a country that, you know, they like to act like um, they don't have a past when it comes to the oppression of Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And Barack Obama, Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh, Shai, that we have this history class. And Barack Obama, Wah, Yahweh, Shai for Germany. General Yohanan never dropping his sword, right? That he was able to raise up, raise up men like myself, like the troopers and the men above me, so that we could have a, a ICPK Canada history class, right? So we're going to be bringing out stories to show that 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 Canada has a has a a filthy path past, just like most oppressors do. Right. So Canada likes to act like we're not racist. We don't have a racist bone in our body, but we're going to bring out stories to show that that Canada has has many, many racial injustices that that happen up here, especially for the children of of Israel. Right. Only, especially for the children of Israel, like our Gadite brothers and sisters, they're, they're they're on reserves right now in Caledonia trying to fight for their land back. Right, they're they're. Shalom, y'all, back to me. I'll check it out. Y'all, back to me. I'm getting a lot of getting a lot of feedback. It sounds like it sounds like an echo. Okay, I guess he jumped out. He'll be back. But we're gonna go into the to the to the history of Canada and and the racial injustice that it, it is it is uh, done over and over again to the children of Israel. All right, so we got a story for you. This story is about Marie Joseph Angelique. Right, she was a she was a slave in in Montreal in Canada. Right, and I thought Canada didn't have slavery. Well, they at least they don't teach us that in school. They don't act like like we've had slavery for Canada. It starts with the uh, the Pilgrims came off the ship, seeing the Native Americans. It was cold in the winter. The Native Americans gave them food, and now. Now everything's just so great, and we don't know how the Native Americans got on the reservations, and we don't know why they don't have running water, and and why the American, why the Native Americans are living so devastated on the reservations they've been forced to go to. Right. So, Lucky, do you have that that story? Another one, comes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get it up for you. One second. Let me get the screen share. Salakia, one second. Let me while we get that, let me just get these the sign-in links and I'll drop those in the chat. Bear with me one moment. We got a sign-in link for anybody watching who wants to join the school, be a trooper in the school, for any sister who wants to be in the school and receive benefits and get a Hebrew name. So we got a sign-in link 
one in Spanish and one in English. We, we know the, the, the tribes of Israel also speak, speak, speak Spanish due to their oppressors. I got one. Let me drop the next one. All right, so I'm about to finish the story right with you one moment. Screen share, Chrome tab. All right, if you could, if you could see this story, drop a one in the chat. You can see, Salaki, if you can see the screen properly, drop a one in the chat. Let me know if you have any issues with it. Just, just drop it in the chat and I'll, I'll take care of it right away. Hey, Shalom, 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 Marie Joseph Angelique, born circa 1705 in Madeira, Portugal, died at 21 June. Died the 21st of June, 1734, in Montreal, Quebec. Angelique was an enslaved black woman owned by Teresa de. Kuang de Francheville in Montreal. Right. So, so hold up right there, Ak. Throughout, Ak. So, Marie Joseph Angelique, she was she was owned. She was a slave, right? And Canada had slaves. Canada likes to act like they didn't have slaves, but Canada had many slaves. They had residential schools. They had slavery and many atrocities and tragedies happened to the children of Israel and Canada, right? So she was a slave and she was owned by a devil, right? A devil owned her. A devil is our oppressor. We know who the devil the Bible speaks of is. That's our oppressor, right? Salakia, our oppressors are such wicked people and and the people in the Bible knew this, right? Salakia, um. Trooper Yurad, are you there? Trooper Yurad, are you there? All right, we'll give him a second. Trooper, Trooper Shaiwan, can you get me Job 9 and 24? We're just going to run into the to who the wicked is and who show you that the wicked are the people that run the earth right now. Right? So whenever you have that, I just read it, right? So Marie Joseph Angelique, she was she was an enslaved woman in Canada, right? She was born in Portugal, and she somehow from Portugal she, as a slave, she made it to Canada as a slave, right? Canada had many slaves, and there are so many stories about slavery in Canada. But Canada, because they like to act like, excuse my French, they like to act like their shit don't stink. They like to act like they did no wrong. Right. right, smile in our face and and suddenly call us a nigger behind our back. Right, so we're gonna show you that who the who right. the wicked is, and then we're gonna break down slavery and and a curse that the children of Israel had to go through for not not uh, keeping the law of their father, the Most High. Whenever you have that, Ock. Another one coming. This is the book of Job, chapter 9 and verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. 
right? So, so the earth is given into the hands of the wicked, right? The ha the earth, the people who run the earth right now are wicked, and the the predominant race running the earth right now is our oppressor, the white man, right? The, from Canada to the U.S. to the Caribbean, down to oh, Europe, down to anywhere you go in this world you're going to find out that the person really running that country is some white man behind behind the desk right our oppressors read when you read some more for me ak he covereth the faces of the judges thereof read if not where and who is he Right, so so our oppressors covered the faces of the judges thereof. The like today in the world we got a we got an image of of Yahawashai, who who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. In the Hebrew, it's Yahawashai, right? So they covered his face. Christ was a black man, and they today you see a picture of, of Caesar Boger, a pedophile, right? A thug from 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 the Roman Catholic Church. Right, his father was the first pope, and he was a homosexual. So they made our king, our righteous king, and they painted his picture and made it. They repainted his picture, made him white, and made it look like he was a homosexual pedophile. Right, Trooper Uri, when you, uh, Baba Kasha, can you get me Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight? And we're gonna we're gonna go into into our slavery. So our the hands of the wicked is who's running the earth right now. Like America just had 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 an election and they voted in the wicked, right? The people sitting in, in parliament right now in, in Canada, they're wicked. The hands of the earth is given into the wicked and the wicked run the earth, right? Trooper, Trooper, uh, Trooper Yorad, whenever you have that, that, that verse, read it. Uh, I'm you, sir. Um, we're not broadcasting on, on, on YouTube. Con, con, there's a couple issues right now. Whenever you have that 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 scripture, read. Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight and verse sixty-eight. And and the Lord bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Right. So 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 the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Salakia, give me one second. Give me one moment. Hey, Shalom. 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 Hey, Shalom. 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 Trooper, 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 you're right. Can you read that one more time for me, Baba Kasha? This is the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way. Wherefore I speak unto thee. Hold up, right there, right there, right there, right there. So the Lord will bring us into Egypt again with ships, right? So Egypt is a Greek word for bondage. Egypt, when the Greeks came into what mezzarin or what what our blackity black folks like to call kemet they see black people in subjugation in subjugation just like they seen us right now right in canada we're in subjugation and in the united states we're being oppressed anywhere that the children of israel go they are oppressed and in slavery right even though we don't have a physical shackle around our neck right now the slavery is still real right so the lord is going to send us into slavery again again he's going to make us work for our oppressors again right with ships now you have to ask yourself how did how did so-called so-called black blacks uh his so-called blacks get into get into the Americas, into Canada, into the Caribbean. How did the so-called native man and so-called Hispanics who are native get into Europe? How did they get into England? Right? They went there with ships. Right? Trooper, Trooper, you're right. Bring me back to, to with ships. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again 
with this. By the way, by the way, where where are I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Now you have to ask yourself, where did blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans really come from? Right? Like, where, where were they before the slave ships? Right? It's where where's our homeland? Where where do where do we call home? Right? And this is telling you the where of thou speaketh, we won't see it again. Right, so we haven't seen our homeland Jerusalem. We haven't seen that since we left. Like the Northern Kingdom hasn't seen it since since they got carried off into Assyria. We haven't seen it since we ran into the Romans and went to go blend in with the Hamites who look like us. Right? So so we don't we haven't seen our homeland again, and this is a curse from the most high. Right? Read some more trooper. Hey, I'm done. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Right? Trooper, what's a bondman and a bondwoman? Wait, sir. Right? <laughs> Give that trooper a hand. Okay, okay. Right? So, so, so we were sold, Salakia, let me get right back with you. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Now, trooper, are our enemies friends? No. No. Right, like, would you, would you go have, would you go sit down? Right, trooper. Would you go sit down and drink coffee with your enemies and have a beer and go to a cookout with your enemy? Right, because your your enemy, la ah, your enemy is gonna kill you. Your enemy is gonna be trying to get over on you, right? So we'll be sold to our enemies, not our friends, not our cousins, not our brothers. We'll be sold to our enemies for bondsmen, slave men, and sold to our enemies for slave women, right? So, okay, what, did you finish the verse? That was the end of the book. Right? Get me back to that, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Read that out and finish the verse one more time for me. Right? Okay. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right? So the word buy. <laughs> Uh, right, so the word the word buy means right. So the word no man, no man shall redeem us, right? Uh, Salakia, Salakia, Akia, man, I want. Um, if you're not speaking at the moment, can you just mute your mic for a couple moments? And whenever you want to speak, just unmute your mic, Bubba Kasha. I'm just getting the feedback. Like I know we all got stuff going on in our house. So it's the water for being here with me and supporting the history class. But can you uh, please mute your mic for a second? And just if you if you're not reading, just uh, when you're reading, just unmute it. When you're not reading, just mute it again. If you need to say something, by all means, unmute your mic and say say what you need. Right. So so we'll be sold onto our enemies, and no man shall buy us. No man shall redeem us. And you think about it. No man redeemed us. No man said, "Hey, man, y'all be oppressing them, them children of Israel over there for so long. Just just stop oppressing them." Take them out the ghetto, give them business loans, give them back their land, like kick them fake Jews out of Israel and put them back in their land. No, no man came and said that. Like, like the African, the so-called Africans are supposed, we're supposed to be so-called African. That thank, thank Yahweh for this school. For now we know that we're not African and no, no oppressors are lying to us, right? We know that we're not African. And the Africans didn't come over and say, hey. You guys been oppressing our family for so long. Like, stop that. No, they don't do that. They come to our neighborhoods and they set up business and they only care that we spend money. And when when we when we go into like if, for people who go into Africa, I've only heard horror stories for for Israelites who go to Africa. Side note: I had an Uber one time and there was a sister who she wasn't dressed in modest apparel. 
And this Hamite said, oh, look at her. She's only good to sleep with one time, then you get rid of her. She's going to be problems. Right? So that's what that's what these Hamites think of us. Shalom, Officer Durash. Shalom, Trooper, Trooper Sakad. Right? Uh, Trooper Shaiwan, Baba Kasha, can, can you continue reading? In 1734, she was charged with arson after a fire leveled Montreal's merchants' quarters. It was alleged that Angelique committed the act while attempting to flee her bondage. She was convicted, tortured, and hanged. Right? So, so she was convicted tortured and hanged right very inhumane like uh trooper sakai can you get me first corinthians 6 and 23 trooper trooper your rod can you get me zachariah 2 and 8 right uh trooper trooper uh shari one you can continue reading a little just finish out that paragraph while it remains unknown whether or not she set the fire, Angelique's story has come to symbolize black resistance and freedom. Right. So her story is a is a is a symbol for black resistance and freedom. Right. Did, was someone saying something? Yes, lot yes, sir. What was the verse you wanted me to get? First Corinthians six and. First Corinthians six and two. Go on, sir. Right. So, so her story became a a symbol for black resistance and freedom. Right. So, if if blacks, Hispanics, and Native American really want to resist and they really want freedom, well. You got to get in this ISUPK. You got to get in this body. Get in this school. Learn your heritage. Learn not to celebrate celebrate Christmas. New Year's is coming up and you're going to be celebrating New Year's, right? New Year's has nothing to do with our culture. You want to resist? Resist the culture of our oppressors, right? I seen on Instagram the other day a Native American sister in front of a Christmas tree talking about talking about Merry Christmas. Right, a few a few months ago, it was what's wet and strong. So yeah. wait, I'm confused. Do you want do you want um your land back, or do you want to do you want your land back and you want to love the oppressor at the same time? Right, the real resistance is getting in the ICPK. Is is not celebrating the culture of our oppressors. Is keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Father Yahweh, and and not sinning. Right. Trooper, whenever you have that verse. And the article, the article say she was alleged. I mean, they don't know. And they went even further. If Whether she did it or not. You understand? Whether right. she did or not, they don't give it them. And that should make us think about all the brothers, the, all the brothers that's in the jail. You know I mean, that didn't commit the crime, but they're still sitting in jail. That should tell, make us think about all, all these brothers that we have that's that's doing work, that's that's giving money to, that's helping each other being rich while they're in, in jail on justice. People that deserve justice, that, that in need of justice. Right there. They, even, even if you're not guilty, they only have a doubt that you are, they, they're gonna they're gonna punish you, man. That's that right. we have no place in this empire. Right. That that was such a heavy point, sir. So because like, like concert, concert. That was such a heavy point. Such a heavy point. Every day, not every day, but every year, there's a new brother coming out of jail, finishing up a 20-year sentence for a crime he didn't commit. And and a lot of times, like like when you look back at it, it's like, well, all we did was a simple DNA test and we figured out it wasn't him. And then we figured out the witnesses were lying and the cops were lying and all that. And it's like, damn, like that's all it took. And you took 20 years of this brother's life. He's never going to get it back. He's never going to see. He's never. He, there's days that he missed with his family. He could have had a son born and he didn't get to 
get to witness that, right? So, Salakia, uh, you know, yeah, I will just read this scripture and I'll continue saying what I was going to say. Whenever you got that scripture, Trooper. Uh, the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 8. Sal Salakia, Salakia, Trooper, you're right. I, I needed the scripture from Trooper Sakad. Come on, sir. This is the book of 1 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Do you not know the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Right? So, so the saints shall judge the world. Right? The saints shall judge the world. And when when the saints, Salakia Trooper, who are the saints? That would be us, sir. Right. So, so the children of Israel are the saints. Right? The children of Israel are the saints, and we are supposed to be judges of this world. We are the priests and prophets of this world. We're supposed to be the judges. And when when we judge, we judge righteously. We judge accordingly. We're just not going to convict someone without the proper evidence. We're not going to torture someone to get a conviction. If, if you strap a man down and you start plucking out his nails and you start taking out his teeth and you start waterboarding him where they put a cloth over his face and pour buckets of water on his face and you give him a couple seconds to breathe and then waterboard him again, he's going to confess to anything. He's going to tell you he killed his own mom even though his mom is alive and well. Right? So when the saints judge the world, the world will be will be righteously judged like we're not going to we're not going to just just uh convict wrongly there will be no wrongly wrongful convictions when the saints judge the world right uh trooper trooper uh your rod whenever you're ready you could drop that 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 zachariah uh, like so you said Zephaniah or zachariah Zachariah, I might have misspoke earlier. Uh, Salakia, Zachariah, two and eight. No, sir. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter two, at verse eight. And it reads, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath been sent me unto the nations which spoil you. For you, for he that touched you touched the apple of his eye. Right. So, so when our oppressors touch us, they touch the apple of the Most High's eye. They touch his his people. He separated us for us to be princes of power. Right. For our sisters to be the princesses of power. For the men to be the judges of the world. Right. He he loved us and didn't care about any of the other nations. Right. So so we're the apple of his eye. And for them touching us. Well, now we got COVID-19. Right. We got plagues. We got devastations that happen around the world. And unfortunately, our people get caught up in these plagues because they don't want to separate from from the oppressors. So they get caught up. Right. Trooper, Trooper Yerod, Trooper Yerod, read that one more time. That was a heavy precept. Read that one more time for me. This is the book of uh, Zechariah, chapter 2, verse 8, and it reads, For thus says the Lord of hosts, after the glory had he sent me unto the nations which spoil you. For he that touched you touched the apple of his eye. Right? So for so when they touch us, when they harm us, when they wrongly convict us, when they put us in slavery, they were touching the apple of the Most High's eye, and that's something they would definitely have to pay for. That's right. right. So let's get let's get back more into this story, right, quick, because this is a good one. This is a good one. This is a story that every every black child should be taught. Every Native American child should be taught. Every uh, Hispanic child should be taught because Canada once again likes to act like like they did nothing wrong. Like like how did you get this country? Why are my brothers and sisters on the reserve? Right? Shalom to, to Gabar, Gabar Kwataza. Yeah, Kwataza. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. 
Uh, we'll just get rid of that right quick. Right? Like, one thing I will say is, be careful how you speak on the priests and prophets of the Lord. We'll just leave it at that. Trooper, Trooper Shah, you want? Can you continue reading this story for me, Baba Kasha? Let's jump down. Again, if you could, if you could see the article properly, just hit me with a one in the chat. So when, whenever, whenever you, uh, whenever you're ready, you can continue reading from early life. Early life and enslavement. Angelique was born in Madeira, Portugal, around 1705. Little is known of the first 20 years of her life. She may have been first enslaved in Portugal, an active port of the Atlantic slave trade. It was likely there that Angelique was sold to the Flemish merchant Nicus Block when she was in her early teens. Right? So so remember we told you the earth was given into the hands of the wicked? Only a wicked, vile person, a profane person would take a child. A teenager is a child. That's not an adult. Would take, and not even just a child, take a man, take a person and sell that person. We can't just make it seem like you can sell, you can sell a grown man because we know you can't do that either. That's, that's a terrible thing, right? Only a wicked person would t turn around and, and sell, sell a child, right? Trooper, Trooper Sakai, bring me to Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Right? Only a wicked person would, would sell a child into slavery. Whenever, whenever you have, have that have that 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 precept you could you could drop it whenever you have it drop that like it's hot all right sir this is the book of deuteronomy 28 verse 32 thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and then and thine eyes shall look and fill with longing for wait 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 wait, wait 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 so our sons and daughters will be given on to another people Right, they'll be given on to their enemies, not just not just they'll be given on to their family members, they'll be given on to another people. The other people were our oppressors, our our enemies, the ones who who raped, who murdered, who pillaged our villages, who took a whip and beat our culture out of our back and took our book and forced us not to read it and then tried to give us back some watered down version of our own book. Those wicked people. Bring that one more time from the from the top, Ak. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Right? So so Marie Joseph Angelique, and I highly doubt that was the name she was born with, gay she was stolen from her parents, right? And given on to her enemies. And her parents, the, all they could do is look with, with longing eyes, and they couldn't do nothing about it. There was no might in their hand. There was no, where was the black army, right, that was supposed to go go get that daughter back to make sure, like, and bring her home safe, right? It, when we watch, when we watch um, uh, Salakia, we watch, we watch movies, and... The fake Jew that runs Hollywood, he makes movies all day about, about a man's daughter getting kidnapped. And now this man flies halfway around the country after listening to his daughter on a cell phone, hiding under a bed. And he goes halfway around Europe, beats up everybody in Europe, and gets his daughter back. We don't have that, right? There was no might in our hand to go get that daughter back. Trooper Salakia, Trooper Trooper Shah you Can you can you continue reading for me? Hello, okay. Angelique was taken by boat to North America, possibly stopping in Flanders 
what is now northern Belgium, which had close trading wait, ties. Wait, 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 wait. Salakia, ah, Salakia, ah. So, so the people in Belgium had slaves? Were you ever taught that in school? I, I was never taught that either. I, I don't know about anybody else, but like, you know, when like we were never taught that we were enslaved everywhere else. We were only taught slavery only happened to the black people in America. That's all we were taught, right? We were taught the Native Americans came over and they were so kind that they decided to teach the oppressors how to how to grow grow corn and how to survive the harsh Canadian winters, right? But right here. We just read, possibly stopping in Flanders, which is now known, which is not, what is now northern Belgium. So there was slavery going on in Europe too, right? So, so you can you basically get to see that that our press our oppression happens everywhere we go. Like just because an oppressor says, "Oh, that had nothing to do with me. I was in Europe." Well, damn, like there was slavery in Europe too. It just said it. Northern Belgium, right? That's that Eastern Bloc of Europe. That's like, that's that area of France, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, right? That area. That's where we did slavery too. Uh, Trooper, Trooper Shaiwan, read, read some more whenever you get the chance. Hold on, hold on. Angelique arrived in New England where she was purchased at age 20 by the French merchant Francois Poulin de Francheville in 1725. Francheville brought Angelique back to his hometown of Montreal to work as a domestic slave. To work as a laborer? Domestic slave. To work as a paid nurse. Domestic slave. Damn, she was a she was a slave. She was a house slave. She was in the house. She wasn't in the field per se. She was a domestic slave. She was in that house working day and night. It didn't matter if she was going through through her issues. It didn't matter what happened. She was a slave. Like three in the morning, ring that bell. I need this. Angelique, I need that. Marie, I need this. Get me that. And there was no compensation for it at all, right? She was a domestic slave. Read some more, Baba uh, uh, Between the time Angelique left Europe and arrived in Montreal, she had been sold at least twice. When Francheville died in 1733, Ownership of Angelique passed to his widow, Therese de Cuon, who was thought to have renamed the enslaved woman from Marie Joseph to Angelique. Right. So, so we're gonna like that. That's such a sad thing to hear. And again, I have suspicions that Marie Joseph wasn't the name that her mother wanted her to have. Right, but this is the name that we're going with right now. But she was when when her first slave master and the husband died, the wife renamed her to Angelique. Right, uh, Trooper Trooper Yorod, can you bring me to? We're still in the Book of Deuteronomy, twenty eight thirty seven. Right, so this is these are the curses that we had to go through. Like this lady, she lost her whole heritage. She she did she didn't know per se who she was, right? She she doesn't know her people were 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 God's favorite people, God's chosen people, His separate people, a people that's supposed to be separate from everything else. She didn't know she was a saint, right? And now, so what? One one day she's Marie Joseph, the next day she's Angelique, right? One day you're an Israelite, and the next day you're just a nigger. Like, that's all they think about you. One day you're an Israelite, and the next day is a lie. You're African, right? You're a Jamaican. You're a Mexican. You're, 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 you're an Indian. Like, that's, that's what we had to go through as a people. 
right? And this is this is our history. Like the the Bible is our history. It's not for everyone else. It's just for us. It's only for us, right? The the Most High thinks the other nations are spittle, right? Salakia, so uh, officer, officer Salakia. So Officer Adiar and Officer Darash, anytime you guys want to add anything, y'all could just jump in. Right? So she, uh, no. come. she 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 lost her heritage and she's being renamed, right? So just like today, our people, we don't have the name of of our people of who we were back then. Right? But thank thank you, thank you for, for the most high raising up. Raising up the men of the ISUPK for teaching us our history, for teaching us and holding on strong to this truth and teaching us our heritage. And now we get to learn our heritage. And now we get to learn not to love our enemies. Right? Because we've been we've been trying to love our enemies for so long. And that, that hasn't even worked. Like how many how many times are you guys gonna try and do something that that that's just failed, that's utterly failed us? Loving our enemies have never worked. Right, the fake Jew doesn't love Germans. The fake Jew doesn't even drive around in Benzes. Right, that's how that's how much they hate they hate their their oppressors. Right, but we're not taught that. We're not taught that that it's okay to 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 not like the things your oppressors did to you. We're not taught that it's not that it's okay to not love your oppressor. Right, black folks, we're stuck under under. Under the worst drug out, Christianity, and we're taught to love, to just love, love, and love our oppressors when that's not what the most high wants, right? Uh, we lost our heritage, to what, to lose the oppressors, to love the oppressors? Salakia. Trooper, Trooper, you're right. Whenever you got that preset, drop it. Salakia, sir. Thank you there. Uh, just need the, uh, the preset again. Oh, the shot. No sweat. It was Deuteronomy 28.37. I don't know what kind. To what? Kind of bar. 28 and 37. Kind, kind, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And it reads, And thou shalt become an, an astonishment, a, pro, a proverb, and a byword. A, 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 a nigger. Uh, uh, Native American and Hispanic, that, that's what that means. We'll become a proverb and a byword, right? Like, we're not going to have our heritage, and we're not going to know who we are. And this is what they're going to do. They're just going to tell us who we are. So today, they tell us, you're Jamaican. And, and tomorrow, we take up a flag and run around and be like, like, like Jamaica, I said, like when, nah, you're not a Jamaican. Like realistically, you're you're from the tribe of Benjamin, right? So so this is these are the curses that 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 we're supposed to go that that we not that we're supposed to go through, but that we went through for not keeping the law, right? If we kept the Most High's law, we wouldn't be going through these curses. Salakia, so like, uh, Trooper Trooper Shah, you on? Where did you leave off? Oh wait, one second, one second, one second. Trooper, you're right. Was that all of the verse? That's the middle of the verse, sir. Uh, Come on, finish out that verse, Baba Kasha. Among all among all nation nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Right. So 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 wherever we went into and did our slavery, we became a pri a proverb. We became a nigger. We became a spick. We became an engine, right? That's what happened. Wherever we went, those are the bywords and the proverbs we became. Trooper, Trooper, you're up. Trooper, shall you on? Where'd you, where'd you leave off? So I guess, sir, uh, when she was being renamed after Marie Joseph's deceased daughter. All right, continue from there. Hold on, hold on. While enslaved for nine years at the Frenchville home, Angelique had three children, none of whom lived beyond infancy. 
birth records indicate that the father was Jack Caesar, a Madagascar-born slave owned by a Franceville family friend. Some researchers believe that the couple was forced by their owners to produce offspring. Right. So, so this is this is something that's happened like so so much throughout our history, where they there was a whole section of plantations and whole plantations that was strictly for breeding, right? Just like how people today get two puppies, and the sole purpose of them getting those puppies are to to grow those dogs, breed them, make them have a litter of pups, and then we turn around and sell those puppies. That's what a whole a whole bunch of our people went through. There was plantations strictly for breeding. They were breeding farms, right? Tro Trooper Shaiwan, can you read that one more time? Uh, Some researchers believe that the couple was forced by their owners to produce offspring. Right. So, so that brings us back to to uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, I believe it was twenty eight and twenty eight and thirty two, where where our people would be having children, and our children would be given off to another people. Like these people forced two people that probably didn't even want to be with each other to be with each other intimately and and try to produce children. For what purpose? So they can have more slaves to make their life more easier because they are the devil the Bible speaks of. There's no good in them, right? A good oppressor is on their knees kissing kissing the boots of the ISUPK. That's what a good oppressor is, right? Trooper, Trooper Shah Yuan, what can you drop some more? Hold on, hold on. Angelique also had a lover an indentured white laborer from France named Claude Thibault, with whom she tried to flee from enslavement and who was believed to have helped her set fire to Montreal. Right, so so she had, she's believed to have had a, a Edomite lover, right? And she had that Edomite lover allegedly because she she didn't know who she was. She didn't she didn't know this law right here. Trooper Trooper Sakad, can you bring me to Deuteronomy seven and three? Right, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about interracial marriage for for a second because that that's something that 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 plagues our community. Like like interracial marriage to the Most High, that's illegal. That's against His law. He doesn't like interracial marriage. He just like we brought out in the Sabbath service, he flooded the he he decided to flood the earth for interracial marriage because the because the sons of God seen the daughters of man, right? That's not talking about angels. That's talking about the the sons of Adam. They seen the daughters of these heathen men and they wanted to go into them, right? So she I get it. She she's going through a tough time. She she is like slavery is one of the worst things to ever happen to our people. Right after that, Christianity, and adding crack and heroin and the abortion clinic and everything else that plagues us in our neighborhoods. Right. So she she had a a a Edomite lover who was an indentured servant. Right. So. A lot of times you might you you're going to hear this one day when you when you're at camp speaking and talking about our slavery and the oppression that we went through. Some Edomite, some red hair Edomite who smells like bear and last week's whiskey. Right. He's going to come up to you and say, but wait, doesn't that apply for me too? my people? They went through slavery. We're Irish. We were slaves, too. Right. Well, la ah, they weren't slaves. They were indentured servants, just like the East Indians in Trinidad and in Jamaica right now. They weren't slaves. They were indentured servants, right? That means they were working for their citizenship. 
right? They had a debt to pay off so they could live in the land, right? They weren't, they, they, they were paid a little bit of money. They weren't treated like, like how, how the niggas, the Hispanics and the, and the Native Americans were. They weren't treated like the children of Israel. They didn't have their backs whipped and ripped up by Salakia, by, by cow whips, right? They didn't, they weren't forced to eat pig's feet. They weren't forced to, to turn the tail of an ox into some of the best food I have, man. That ox tail is sweet. Like, give me that oxtail with that rice and peas. But the 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 Irish weren't forced to eat that. We took the the worst parts of the of the animal and we turned them into 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 delicacies. We took chicken foot and turned that into a soup. Right, and that that chicken foot soup is mean. Are you sick? Just go get some chicken foot soup. Add add some more Scotch bonnet to it and sweat that out, and you, you're gonna get rid of that sickness. Right, that's 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 what us what us Benjamins like to say. Right, if you sick, go to the doctor. Go check out the doctor, man. I don't need to be getting flagged from anybody saying we telling people all this. The herbs and spices is gonna is gonna heal us, right? But if you if you're sick, go to the doctor. But we were we were as slaves. We had the worst of it, and we we made the we made do. That's that's something Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans do. Every day we have the worst situations, but we make do, right? So she had she had a a white lover, an indentured servant, not a slave. She was a slave. He was an indentured servant, right? Uh, who has that precept? I was asking for. God, someone, someone, get me Jeremiah two and fourteen, right? So whenever you got that precept, drop that. Con, sir, this is the book of Deuteronomy 7, verse 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou give, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Right? So that's a law right there against against interracial marriages. We won't we won't make marriages with them. Right, not our daughter, not our son. Just we like we're not supposed to go to the other nations. Like you're a Benjamite. There's eleven. There's damn near twelve other tribes. You could from from Cuba to Haiti to to Mexico to Brazil to America. We got we got we got twelve different flavors. Right, like like why would you want the Edomite when you can go get an Ishikarite? You can go get a Zebulonite. You can go get a Judite, a Benjamite, right? And the list, the the list just goes on. Like our women are the greatest women on on the baddest thing walking. Like like think of think of of what of what what our oppressors call the baddest Edomite. She ain't got nothing on the baddest Israelite, right? Especially especially when when she got her head wrapped up and she got that modest apparel that dress on. Ooh, we good night. Like y'all just don't know. Y'all think y'all think our sisters are supposed to are supposed to be walking around with their with their with their rear out of door with their all the cleavage hanging out in the front, right? That's that's not how we're supposed to how we're supposed to walk around. Trooper, trooper, read that one more time. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. Right? So we don't take their sons to our daughters, and we don't give our daughters to their sons. That action caused the world to flood. Right? For those actions, a whole bunch of people were wiped out, and only eight people survived that flood. Right? So we'll continue reading. And let's get into her fight for freedom, right? And that's the, like, damn, you got to fight for freedom? I thought freedom was a right. Freedom was a must, right? So when they said all men are equal, they weren't talking about us because we were enslaved. Trooper, Trooper, Trooper Shah Yuan, Baba Kasha, can you, can you read for me? Hold on, Tom. In December 1733, 
Angelique asked her mis mistress for her freedom. Right? So, so Angelique asked her mistress for freedom. Now, we're going to get into what happened when she asked her mistress for freedom. Can you imagine being locked down and asking for freedom? Right? Now, I don't have any experience of, of being in that type of slavery. Right? But I'll speak for myself. I, I had to do some time when I was in the world just not knowing who I was as a person. And I made mistakes and I have to live with those with those mistakes, right? And I had to do time. Now there was times when I needed things and I couldn't get things. Like I was in a place where you get locked up out of yourself for eight hours in a day. And if you forget something in yourself and you need it, like say you forgot your phone book, you gotta make an important call. You go ask, you go ask the devil who runs the facility Hey, can I get into my cell for a second? And that that devil who smells like wine and old cigarettes, she's gonna look at you and say and say no. Right? Now that's me asking for for something small. I just wanted I just wanted some noodles out of my cell to tell you the truth. Like the the food that day was dog shit, and I forgot to bring my noodles out, and I needed some some extra stuff to add to that cold beans. Right? And she said no. And I felt like going into a rage. Now imagine asking someone for your freedom and how and how that would make you feel. And then imagine the person, just think about the person who's going to tell you no. You can't get freedom. You're my Nigga. Go make me a call. That's the Jeremiah too. All right. Trooper, Trooper Sakai, get me, get me Jeremiah 2 and 14. Right. Imagine asking, asking for, for, for your freedom from a devil, and they're not, they don't want to give it to you. Just imagine how that's gonna make you feel. Just um, think about all the thoughts that are gonna go through your head, and then you gotta go back and and do her laundry. You gotta go back and wash her nasty underwear. Right. Um. Uh, can I get Ezekiel thirty-five and five? Whenever, whenever, uh, someone grab that for me. Grab it and hold it for me. Slap, so I have Jeremiah 2 okay, and 14. Okay, okay, yeah, get me. Uh, read that, read that for me. Thuwada. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2 and verse 14. It reads, is Israel a servant? Is he a home-born right. slave? So, Why is, so is Israel supposed to be a slave? Right, like Israel is not supposed to be a slave. Um, we're supposed to be be the saints. We're we're the saints and the princes of power. We're the most high high highs chosen chosen people. Right, uh, Salakia, Baba Kasha, Officer Darash, can you get me Deuteronomy twenty eight and one for a quick second? Uh, right, and just drop that when you when you have it. Uh, like we're not supposed to be a slave. We're not supposed to supposed to supposed to be up un, in servitude to to our oppressors. Our oppressors are, are, are retarded children. Right, they they poison the air. They they say, hey, let's go green. Everything's about the environment. The environment. The environment. The environment. All right, I'm about to shoot this rocket up into space just to see what happens. Like, like, I'm gonna make this electric car, and then I'm gonna shoot this rocket and add gas into the air zone. But my electric car is supposed to protect the air zone. Let's go to Mars to find out what's going on Mars, right? Th those are our oppressors. That's their mentality. Officer Darash, uh, do you have that precept, Baba Kasha? 
God. This is Deuteronomy chapter 21 or 28 and verse 1. And it came to pass, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all Low nations. Above, the, above the nations, we're supposed to be under them? High above all nations. Ah, now that don't say that. That says we're supposed to be a slave. High above all nations of the earth. Right. So you see that right there, right? High above the nations of the earth for keeping the laws of the most high. Right. That's that's where we're supposed to be. Right. We're not supposed to be in servitude. We're not supposed to go to our oppressors for everything. We're supposed to keep this law and our oppressors come to us for everything. Right. Uh, Trooper, you're right. You, you got more of that more of that Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2 and verse 14. Bring it from the top, Baba Kasha. Is Israel a servant? Is he a home? Uh, is he is he a homeborn slave? Why is he spoiled? Right? Why why is Israel spoiled? We're spoiled because we don't keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. And our oppressors spoil us. They they make us rotten. They make us do the things that we don't want to do. They make it so so. Weed is now legal, and now every black boy in the ghetto is is thinking, "Hey, man, this this I woke up this morning; it was too stressful. Let me roll this blunt." Right? Israel Israel is not supposed to be a homeborn slave. Right? So so now we're gonna get back more into this story because this story is a really good story, and I'm gonna have more stories for you every week going into our history and showing you the the terrible things that 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 our oppressors have done for us. And I'm not just going to show you the terrible things. There's some good things that, that we've done. And I'm going to find those stories for us too. It's not just going to be the bad. I'm going to show you the, the good that we do. And I'm going to show you how where we're supposed to be. Right? And we're going to get into some biblical stories as well. Right? Uh, Trooper Shah Yuan, Baba Kasha, can you continue reading? <clears throat> this infuriated Angelique who went on a small reign of terror in the household. Right. So so when I read this article, I stopped right at that sentence right there. Because I'm thinking, who wrote this? Right? And you can find this on the Canadian Canadian Encyclopedia on, um, on the web, right? And I'm thinking, she hasn't seen freedom early teens and probably way before that. She doesn't, she oppresses her spirit is a pedophile spirit. It's a homosexual spirit, right? So I was reading this and it said this infuriated Angelique who went on a small reign of terror. Who wrote this article? You're going to say that a lady who was a slave, asked her slave owner for freedom. The slave owner said, no, nigga, go make me some coffee, go wash my underwear. And Angelique went on a small reign of terror. Who was the terror for? Like, this, Angelique's been living in terror. Right? Now, they're saying she went on a small reign of terror in the in the in the household. Let's find out what they thought was, was terror, right? Trooper Shah Yuan, if you may. Baba Kasha. She talked back to her owner. Wait, 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 wait. So terror is talking back to your owner. So we all, like, most of, most of, like, all parents know that you're going to have a child you're going to tell your child to do something. As that child gets older, they're going to test the water a little. They might talk back. That's terrorism. Right? So when your child talks back to you, that's terrorism. Right? So her not having freedom, her, her possibly being raped by her owners, 
her being forced to sleep with a man that she didn't want to, that wasn't terror. But her talking back was, was a small reign of terror. Right? Let, continue reading, Baba Kasha. Threatened her with death by roasting. Quarreled Read. with the others. Hello, oh, come on. Quarreled with the other servants in the house. Threatened them too with burning. Right. So, so it doesn't say she argued with the other slaves. She argued with the other servants, people who would be giving her freedom. Right. And allegedly, she she threatened them with burning. Right. So that was terror. Not her not getting her freedom, right? And now we know an aspect of, of, of slavery was if you didn't do what the slave master said, if you didn't do what the, the devil, the oppressor said, they would beat you, right? Sometimes it was a cow whip. Like they had, like our oppressor, man, they had many, many ways to torture someone. They, they know how to torture someone, right? In the South, they would lock you in a hot box. Right, you seen that in 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 the movie The Django when the Django is supposed to go for his wife, he's trying to find his wife, and he finally gets to gets to the the plantation that the devil the devil owns, and he's looking, and they're bringing her out of a metal box that's in the ground that was just in the sun. She was baking, like they were trying to bake her, like, and that's what she went through. So, like our presses, they had they they. Any way they could think of to torture. Just go look up medieval torture practices and you'll find it. You got an Iron Maiden. They're like you think you think that walking around through this plague right now with a mask on is torture. That's what our oppressors think. They hold up a sign that that has it's a picture depicting a slave with an iron mask on. Right? And to them that's not torture. But walking around with a mask on because we're in a we're in a global plague that's shutting down kingdoms and shutting down powers that 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 that's torture, right? Talking back is torture. Nations who had to go through residential school, who had to get their culture beat out of them, raped out of them, their hair cut, couldn't speak their language, that wasn't terrorism. And we're going to bring out those residential schools. Just stay tuned and just keep checking in every Monday at 7 p.m. And we're going to bring those stories out for you. Right? Trooper, Trooper, Shah you want? Can you, can you read some more? Uh, Baba Kasha? And made life so unbearable for her fellow servant, Marie Lou, Louis, Aurier, that she quit her job. Wait, wait, wait. So that's to show you. That's all the proof you need right there. The servants weren't slaves. She had an option to quit. And if Marie Angelique, Joseph Angelique had the option to quit, she would have quit. So now we're going to find, we're going to continue reading and see exactly, exactly where, uh, what, what, she might have thought she had to do to get out of her oppression. But before we get there, someone bring me to Ezekiel 35, 5, and 7. Baba Kasha, whoever has it, drop it when you get it. Go on, sir. This is um, the book of Ezekiel 35, verse 5. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And has shed the blood of the children love? of Israel. They, they had a perpetual love for us? A perpetual hatred. Right? So they, and has shed the blood of the children of Israel. Right. So because they had a perpetual hatred and shed the blood of the children of Israel, right? Our oppressors, they don't love us. They don't know how to love. They don't even love themselves. Like, our oppressors, they... they they hate each other, right? Think about it. The man who's running around calling himself a Jew today, the fake Jews, and the Texas Ranger in in Texas who, who's known as a redneck, they're the same people. 
They're literally the same people, same family. But they hate each other so much that that one says, Oh, nah, we can't mess with you, and the other says we're better than you, so they don't they don't mess with each other. Wars have been fought because oppressors don't love each other, right? So they damn sure don't love us, and they've had a perpetual hatred for us. Read. The time of their calamity and the time that they're... Oh, Salak is here. And has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Verse 6. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Right? So blood shall pursue our oppressors. Terrorism, violence, death, and destruction. When you see terrorism happening to our oppressors, just know it's the blood pursuing them for the violent crimes they've done to the children of Israel. Right? That's the blood pursues them. Like they go through these terroristic acts. 9-11 was because they did crimes against the children of Israel. Any time that you see just mass death and destruction come to our oppressors, it's the Lord. It's the Lord doing it to them. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He's letting letting us know that that hey, maybe if you keep the laws, I might revenge you. Right? He he's gonna take revenge for us. We we can't we can't. How are we gonna fight a man who has drones? Who sits in California and shoots a drone off in Iraq? Like, how are you gonna fight that man? You can't fight him by yourself. You can't pick up guns and dress in all black and think that you're going to you're going to basically fight the oppressor because you bought his AR-15 and you bought his ammo. Did you hear what I just said? You bought his AR-15 and his ammunition. When he doesn't want to sell you that AR-15 and ammunition, what are you going to do? How are you going to fight him? I'm going to tell you how you fight him. That you don't wear all black and carry an AR-15. You you wear all black, get a black headband, put on some black boots, and you come and do the trooper program. 90 days, right. you get yourself a name. Right? Just like all the men that you see right now, that's how you fight them. Right, you take yourself out, out of, out of, of her. Exactly, that's exactly what you do. You take yourself out of her. You take yourself out of, out of the culture of our oppressors. Right. Right. Read some, read some more, Trooper Sakad. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. Right, so so our 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 power, Yahweh, he's gonna devastate our oppressors. He's gonna devastate where they live and where where they hold their power. And for you want you want the father to fight for him, for, fight for you. Well, you fight for the for the father by by taking yourself out of the world and killing off killing off the old you and be born again in this truth. Salakia, where are we now? I quit her job. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, okay. Trooper, Trooper Shayuan, Baba Kasha, can you continue reading? We're we're on some good time. We're gonna get through this. We got a lot of precepts, so we'll try to we'll try to speed through it a little more. <laughs> In early 1734. Franceville sold Angelique to Francois Etienne Houne of Quebec City for 600 pounds of gunpowder. She was waiting for the ice to, to thaw on the St. Lawrence River in order to send Angelique by boat. Salakia, Salakia. Uh, Trooper, Trooper Yurad, can you get me Isaiah 14 and 1? Trooper Saka Trooper uh Shah Yu Wan, can you read that part again? She was waiting. Come on, come on. She the was water. waiting. 
She was waiting for the ice to thaw on the St. Lawrence River in order to send Angelique by boat. Salakia so, Adewan, uh, Adiar, Salakia Officer Adiar. Uh, I'm kind of lost right now. Can you tell me where the St. Lawrence River is? Uh, so like it, but you you see you see when you you are you are my you you came in Montreal, right? Right. Is that is that big water like a, once you're in my balcony and then you see right. the water? That's the Saint Lawrence. Right, the water, sir. That's all I needed. So the Saint Lawrence is in Montreal, right? Where's Montreal? In Canada. There was uh, slavery so, so like, in Canada. So like, the water, sir. Uh, <laughs> that that's all I needed. God. So, so, like, so, like, so, so, like, so, like, yeah, it goes all the way to, now I mean, the downtown and uh, old port, you understand, all the way to La Salle, right. understand? It goes, it does, I mean, Montreal is, is in the middle of the St. Right. Lawrence. So, so, so there you have it. The St. Lawrence River is in Canada, right? Canada had slavery. Don't let no no oppressor try to trick you and make you feel like there wasn't slavery in Canada. Learn your history. Marie Joseph Angelique, she did her slavery in Canada where she died. We're going to get to that part though. And we're going to find out how she died. Right? Uh trooper uh, so so yeah, priest. Concer. This is a book. I don't know if you if you could see it good. Let me this is a book. It's in French, though. Le Noir du Québec, the black, the blacks of Quebec. It will tell you about all the slaves that were in Quebec. So when people say that we didn't have slaves in Canada, it's a damn lie. Just like, like just like Christian also, Subaje is saying, we had slaves in Quebec, and in this book, that that we had slaves that were working so hard, they lost their toes in the cold, man. Good, you understand? Man. That they didn't have no shoes to wear in Canada, man. They let, let, let them freeze until their toes fell off, man. You understand? That's why we had in Canada, but they don't want to, they're, they're not going to bring this in school. You got to like, buy the books and buy, you know I mean, go get the history together, man. But they right. are slaving Canada, man. It's a lot, Con, it's a lot sir, of water, sir, for that. That, 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 that definitely, definitely is, is some information we need to know. And that's a book that, 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 you know, you want to learn your history? That's a book you should get. I, my, I myself, I'm going to go look for that book so we can have it for, for the school in Toronto. So, Aki, okay, bear with me one second. Right, so that, that book, that book, we're going to have to look for that book and we're going to need one for Toronto because we could probably make like 40 classes off that book alone. Right, so Salakia, Trooper, Trooper Shah, you want? Can you continue reading for me, Baba Kasha? Hello, Anton. It was rumored that Kunet would in turn sell Angelique into enslavement in the West Indies. Upon hearing news of her sale, Angelique threatened to burn down Trashville's house with her in it. Right. So, so she was threatening to burn down the house allegedly with her slave master in it. You just got to think of how much pain this woman had to be going through to even come up with that thought. Like I'm gonna burn this shit down with you in it. Right? right. Judas would say, "On oh, God, I'm gonna burn that down with you in it." Right? Continue reading. Baba Kasha. Soon after. Angelique ran away with the bulk. Her intent was to return to Portugal, the land of her birth. The couple set fire to Angelique's bed at Alexis Monnier's home, where Francheville had chosen to move them temporarily and fled in the direction of New England where they hoped to catch a ship bound for Europe. Right. Thwata, Thwata. Uh, Trooper Yurad, do you have Isaiah 14 and 2? When you, if you have it, read. 14 and 1, Baba Kasha. 
This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, and verse 1. And it reads, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right? Trooper, Trooper Uriah. Who's Jacob? Jacob is... Um, it's Israel, so right throughout uh, and and who are the strangers that shall be joined with them? Um, so lucky, I believe these are uh, these will be um, the other nations. But Ka, not... Ka, no. the, these strangers are the heathens, right? So and the strangers who are the heathens. So the heathen shall be joined with them, right? And they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. The, the, the heathens are going to cleave unto the house of Israel, right? Just, just like what they do right now. Like, like, like we celebrate, celebrate not us in the ISUPK, but Jake's in the world. They celebrate heathen culture, but the heathens really absorb our culture. Everywhere, everywhere you go, there's a rap. How the hell is there Italian drill rap? Drill comes from comes from gang banging and hating your brother in Chicago. What do the Italians know about drill? There's K-pop, K, uh, what is it? K-pop or K-rap? Some nutty ass shit like that. Salaki, excuse my French. Now the Kore Koreans want to rap now, right? So they took the black art form like they took jazz, and now they just do what they want. They're going to cleave to us. And when and when we're in the kingdom, they're going to cleave to us. Right? Read verse 2. Oh, no, uh, <clears throat> verse 2. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of, of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they right? shall be captured. So we're God, we're gonna we're gonna possess the strangers for servants and handmaids, right? Read that last part again and and finish out the verse, Baba Kasha. Whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Right. So we're gonna take our strangers, our oppressors, for captives whose slaves we were. We're gonna have them as slaves. Cause they, we were their slaves. Well, how do you think? How do you think America got so rich? How do you think? How do you think the kingdom of England got so rich? Right? They still like France still be living off that Haitian money. Right? Till this day, they're living off that that money that they got from Haiti. Cause Haiti beat them up so badly, and they were devastated. And they said, you know what? We're gonna surround Haiti, embargo Haiti, and make sure that the child that the Levite children don't get to eat until they agree to to pay us. Right? These nations are still living off our blood, off our sweat, off our our labor. Right? Was that the end of the verse? Thanks. Yeah. But Thuada, Thuada. Uh, Trooper Shah, you want uh, hit me with some more? Baba oh, Two weeks later, Angelique and Thabalt were tracked down by the police in nearby Chambly. Angelique was returned to her owner to await transportation to Quebec City, and Thabalt was sent to jail. Once she returned to Montreal, Angelique continued to state that she would burn down her mistress' house because she wanted to be free. Right. So, so Angelique just wanted to be free. Like her, like Thibault was sent to jail because he was a free man. Right. Angelique was sent back to her slave owner because she was a slave. Like that's that's basically it right there. Like one went to jail because he had to pay for crimes because he was a free man. That's a whole different law for him. And the other is a slave. Just go back to your owner. It's all good. 
Like, don't worry about it. We don't care if you've been here. We don't care if you're being raped, if they're beating you, if they're not feeding you. Just go back over there. You're her property. Right? Uh, Salakia. Someone get me Deuteronomy 32 and 7. Someone get me Isaiah 61 and 1. Right? So, so... Whoever has Deuteronomy 32 and 7, read when you have it. So she tried to escape. She couldn't escape. Well, she did escape. She just didn't get that far. They tracked her down like two weeks later, right? They were able to track her down two weeks after she ran. That means she didn't get that far. She didn't make it back to Portugal where she wanted to go, right? She was, she was captured and brought back into bondage. Right. While her her the person who helped her, the the white man who helped her, he was sent to jail. Right. And she she obviously she wanted to go home. She wanted her freedom. She's going to continue to say, I'm going to do this, this and this if you don't let me go. Right. That's that's sort of like when Moses was talking to Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh to let my let my people go. And he's basically telling Pharaoh, like, let let the children of Israel go. Or this, this and this is going to happen. Right. So so that's what she was going through. She wanted her freedom. Whoever has whoever has Deuteronomy 32 and seven, uh, read it when you have it. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the year, years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. The, thy elders and thy will tell thee. So like it. Right. Thy elders and they will tell you tell thee. Right. Thuata, you got it. All right. Uh, so ask, ask your father. About the days of old. Remember the days of old. Don't just forget that 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 they took the Gadite children and put them in in residential schools and made them shed their hair. Don't just forget that they would rape and buck break the children of Israel. Right? Buck breaking is when they would basically the strongest nigga on the plantation. They would hold them down and sodomize them in front of everybody. Right? Think about what that does to the psyche of the people. Well, damn, they got that nigga and they did him like that. What are they going to do to me? And I sure damn ain't as strong as that nigga. Right? That, that's what they did to us. Remember the days of old. Remember how they had us on slave ships for months, on months coming across, coming across, what is that, the Atlantic? Right? Remember that. Don't forget it. Don't forget about 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 all the terrible things that our oppressors would do to us. Remember that and hold that to your heart. That's why I wake up on 100 every day. I have no chill, right? Especially for oppressors. I got I got the most patience for my brothers. For oppressors, I have no chill for them. I wake up on 100. Zero to 100 real quick. I start at 100. For that fact, because I remember the days of old. Right. So remember those days. That's why that's why the older the older people in our neighbor in our neighborhoods and and the older people of us, they're very important because they could tell you about the days of old. They could tell you about what it was like to be segregated. Right. We are better off with segregation. We had we had our doctors. We had everything we had to do. We had to do for ourselves. Now we just run to the oppressor. As soon as something is wrong, as soon as you need something, you just run to the oppressor. Because we gotta we live with them, right? So remember those days of old. Salakia trooper, drop that one more time. I gotta, I gotta the people have to hear that one more time. Uh, uh, Deuteronomy 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old, consider the years. Of many generations. Many generations. Consider consider the years of all the people that came before you. All the things they had to go through. Read. 
Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Go to your grandfather and ask him what was it like. What did you got? What did you have to go through? How did the devils treat you when you were a young man? Thy elders, and they will tell thee. Right, that right there. Like, ask the elders, and they will tell you. Who has Isaiah sixty-one and one? When you got that, drop it. Go on, sir. Isaiah 61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Right? So, so this truth. Is, is is here to set us free. This truth is definitely here to set us free. And and it's 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 basically like you want to get out of this bondage, you want to get out of this captivity that we're in, you gotta get in this truth. This truth is sent back like the there was men that, that came before me that came long before me in this school and they did the work. General Yohanna never never dropped his sword. He stays strong in the truth, right? And he he raised up men that, that came out and taught us the truth, right? And it's, this truth will set us free, right? Christ even precepts this, right? Uh, Trooper Shah Yuan, Baba Kasha, can you bring me to Luke 4? I think it's 4 and 18. The book of right. Luke, chapter four. This is the book of Luke, chapter four and verse eighteen. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh Salaki, Salaki, if you're reading right now, can you mute your mic, please? Baba Kasha. Water. Read that one more time. Oh, okay. This is the book of Luke, chapter 4 and verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bound. It's like it. Them that are bruised. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, Akia. Uh, right? That was, that was perfect, right? So, that's right. Uh, that uh, Christ precept Isaiah 61, right? that Christ Christ was trying to teach his people the truth and how to how to how to live this truth not just say i love god and then go do whatever you want right how to live this truth how to keep the law that's what Christ was doing and that's what this truth is here this truth is here to set you free this truth is definitely going to set you free and you're going to you're not going to be living in hell no more your your life is going to get so much better once you get into this truth, like like myself, I, there's so many things I would worry about in the world. Now I wake up, those issues, no sweat. All right, it's, it's whatever. Right? This truth is going to give you brotherhood. Like, I look at all my brothers right here. At any time, if any one of these brothers needs something, they could call any one of these brothers that you see. Right? Right. And that's that's brotherhood. That's what this truth will do. It will set you free. You won't be in bondage no more. You won't be oppressed by Christmas. Black men, you won't be you won't feel like you got to go out and sell drugs cuz your cuz your rib needs you to get Christmas presents for some children that won't even appreciate that. Right? You're not going to be oppressed by Valentine's Day and feel like because you didn't buy some stinking flowers that are going to die 
24 hours after you get them that you're going to be kicked out of your house. Right? This truth will set you free. Uh, someone bring me to Exodus 21 and 16. We're going to try and run through the rest of these precepts and the rest of this story right quick. Someone give me Exodus 21 and 16. Once you have it, read. Exodus 21, verse 16. And he that stealed a man and sealed him, or if he be back, be found. Slackers. Con. Keep reading? Yeah, con. Okay, sir. Or, he, or if he be found in his, in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Right? So our oppressors are going to be put to death when Christ comes back. Because we're still in their hand. They stole us. They sold us. When Christ comes back, he's going to find us working for them. Right? He's going to find us trying to separate from their culture. In the UPK, we totally separate from their culture. You won't hear a Merry Christmas from us. You won't hear a Happy New Year's. You will not get a Valentine's Day card from me or none of these men here. Right? We separated. Right. So when Christ comes back and he finds us still in the hands of the people that stole us, sold us, raped us and murdered us, surely they'll be put to death. Right. Trooper, trooper, uh, show you one. Let's read the re let's try to read the rest of this article. We're just going to try and get through it. We might go over the time just a little. Read when you get it. On the evening of on the evening of Saturday, tenth April, seventeen thirty four, a large portion of Montreal, the Merchants' Quarter, was destroyed by fire. At least forty six buildings, mainly homes, were burnt. Plus the convent and hospital of the Hotel Dieu. De Montreal. Angelique was accused of starting the fire and arrested by police on April 11. She was taken to court the following morning, where she was charged with arson, a capital crime punishable by death, torture, or banishment. In the French legal system of the 18th century, the accused was presumed guilty, and in New France, there were no trials by jury, only inquisitorial tribunals in which the defendant was meant to prove her innocence. Lawyers were banned from practicing in the colony by Louis the Fourteenth. On, right, so, on, right, right quick, right quick before we continue. Uh, you could just see that, that like, like a black person living in these times, there was no you're innocent until proven guilty. It's just like we thought you did something, whip, 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 hang, burn. That's what it was, right? You were just, you were just guilty, like, and an a inquisition. Inqu inquisitorial tribunals that's just straight torture that's just straight waterboarding iron maiden like whatever they could think to torture you that's what they did right uh salakia where do we finish Khan, you can continue reading another one Khan. on april 12 1734 Angelique, at 29 years old, was brought before Pierre Rambault, judge for the jurisdiction of Montreal. With Rambault was Francois Foucher, the king's procurator, chief attorney and prosecutor, and four notaries. Also, pre also present was the king's scribe, 
an important personage in matters of the court, Claude Cyprian Jacques Orlier. Right. Uh, Salakia, Salakia. Trooper, Trooper Sakat, get me Obadiah 1 and 10. Trooper Shari 1, you can continue reading. Come on, come on. Come on, sir. So began one of the most spectacular trials to come out of 18th century Canada. Over 24 witnesses were called, 23 of whom, including a five-year-old girl, stated that they believed Angelique had set the fire because at one point or another, she had told them that she would. One witness said that she saw Angelique carrying a pot of live coals up to the roof minutes before the fire started. The court felt that she had intended to flee enslavement and had set the fire in order to cover her tracks. Right, so, so these courts, they had 24 so-called witnesses and only one said they seen her with coals and no one else said they seen her set the fire. And this is why the saints shall judge the world. Cause, because when we do things, we're thorough about it. There isn't no one witness that saw that saw and didn't see you do anything. They're saying they saw her with coals, but they didn't see her dump the coals or do what? They just saw her with coals, right? She could have been trying to heat up some water. We don't know what happened. But the courts, like our people... We just go through it, and like they're saying, this is a spectacular trial. Now, just think about all the other, all the other trials, all the other blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans had to go through, right? Uh, a lot of them probably didn't even have witnesses. It was just a slave master saying they did this, and that's why I killed them, and that was good enough, right? When who has that uh, trooper uh, Sakad? Did I ask you for Obadiah? Trooper Sakaji, you there? Ah, uh, Salaki, Ak, you're on mute. This is the book of Obadiah, 1 and 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Right, so eventually... Our oppressors are going to be cut off forever, and they're just going to cease to exist after they build the kingdom, of course, right? For the violence that they've committed against the children of Israel, shame shall cover them, right? That's damn near why why, why uh, Cain lost his pigment, right? Why you can see the blood through Cain's skin. Why our oppressors, you see the blood through their skin, because that's their shame. Right, Cain committed the first murder against his brother. Right, that's the first murder ever. Cain did it, killed his brother, like bashed him in the head with a rock, or who, who knows how he did it exactly. But he killed his brother, and for that, the shame, and for all the things Esau did against us, the shame shall cover them. And eventually, because they're so wicked, and they they were made to be wicked, and they'll never be good. They, they'll be cut off forever. Like, how long have we been trying to love our oppressors? How long have we been trying to say, it's okay, Mr. White Man, I love you. It didn't matter that you held us for so long and now I speak your language and I got to go to you for everything, <coughs> right? Shame, shame shall, shall cut them off forever. And you, you know our oppressors are wicked. Just turn on the news in the city of Toronto and you're going to see so many predominantly black families being evicted from their homes because they couldn't pay rent because the kingdom was shut down during COVID. They don't care. Right? Uh, Trooper Shaw, you want to read some more? Another one, come After a six-week tribunal, Angelique was found guilty and sentenced to death. 
she was to have her hands cut off and be burned alive. The sentence was appealed to the Superior Court in Quebec City, where the death penalty was upheld and the gruesome aspects of the sentencing lessened. Angelique would be tortured. It's not, it's not Hold up one second. So she was sentenced to have her hands cut off. Right? Where, where else? Death penalty was upheld. Uh, Angelique was found not guilty, sentenced to death. She was supposed to have her hands cut off and burned alive. Right now, now some of these oppressors thought, nah, that's too, that's too much, right? So they tried to lessen it, but still the sentence was upheld and she was still sentenced to death, right? They didn't think they deserved death for kidnapping this woman and forcing her to work for you. They think she deserved death for fighting for her freedom, for trying to escape her freedom, to try to escape her slavery. Someone bring me to, uh, Zechariah 11 and 5, Baba Kasha. Right? Right? So, like, our, like they, they basically thought that, that, damn, like, you know what? We can't cut off her hands and burn her, but we can still kill her, though. Like, that's, that's what, that's what they thought. That's what was on their mind. That's what they said is is a lesser sentence for her yeah. trying to gain her freedom. Salaki, what was that? He said um, Zechariah 7 and 9. Zechariah 11 and 5. 11 and 5, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no sweat, Ak. no sweat. It's when you got it, drop it. Okay. This is, um, this is the book of Zechariah 11 and 5. Whose possessors slay them. And hold themselves not guilty, and they whose possessors them, love them, whose possessors slay them. Now nah, our possessors give us hugs. Slay them. Now nah, they put us back in our land and set us right. Slay them. And then what do they do? And hold themselves not guilty. Right. So they said, Nah, 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 nah. We can't cut our hands off and burn her alive. That would be too harsh. That would be too bad. Right. They slay us and hold us not guilty. Read. And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. Doesn't that sound like every Christian pastor that ever came through your neighborhood, especially Jehovah's Witness, who you know, Dan, you're comfortable to walk through this neighborhood because of slavery. And then you turn around and tell us, bless us be the Lord. Right, Salakia, uh, Trooper, Trooper, Shaw, you want? Where'd you, where'd you stop reading? Um, when it said uh, the death penalty was upheld and the gruesome aspects of the sentencing lessened. Okay, continue, continue reading from there. Another one come. Angelique would be tortured hanged, and then her body burned. She returned to Montreal to await her death. Throughout her trial at both the lower court in Montreal and the upper court in Quebec, she denied setting the fire. Read. On the, on the morning of June 21st, 1734, Angelique was tortured in her jail cell by means of the Broadquins, a medieval torture instrument that crushed her leg. The use of torture was standard in 18th century prosecution, and in Angelique's case, the court wanted her to admit to the setting of fire. Under torture, she broke down and confessed. Nevertheless, she refused to name Claude Thibault as co-conspirator and co-arsonist. The judges believed that Thibault and Angelique had set the fire together. 
Khan, Akhi Wale. Just finish out the, that last paragraph for me, Baba Kasha. After the torture, Angelique, dressed in a white chemise and holding a burning torch in her hand, the symbol of her crime, was placed in a garbage cart and taken to the portal of the Notre Dame Basilica, where she confessed to her crime and begged pardon of God, the king and the people. She was then hanged. The hangman and torturer was Matthew Leviel, an enslaved black man employed as royal ex executioner. Angelique's body was displayed on a gibbet for two hours. At 7 p.m., her body was placed on a pyre and burnt. Her ashes gathered and cast to the four winds. God damn. Like, Salakia. That's all you got to read. We're going to, that's all we need for, for this right now. Right, so so you can see it right there. Like our oppressors don't care, and they they just do the worst things to us. They went into our cell and tortured her. They burned her, and they hanged her, then burned her. Like our oppressors don't care, right? And this is why our oppressors need to be destroyed. Like just like Officer of Five Hundred Adiar said. They weren't even sure if she did the crime, right? Now, up until the moment she died, she said, I didn't do it, right? I strongly believe she didn't do it. Like, I could only speak for myself that, that if I'm going to be killed by my oppressors and they're accusing me of something I did and I'm going to get killed for it. And like, I'm trying to escape freedom and I got to burn something down. And they say, oh, well, we're hanging you because you burnt something down and I'm going to be burned. That's why I burnt your shit down. That's what I would say. I don't know about everybody else. Right. But this sister, she said it wasn't me until the day she died. Right. And for this reason, our oppressors need to be destroyed. Right. Someone bring me to Psalms 30, 137 and 8. Someone get me uh, Matthew 15 and 24. And someone get me Revelations 13 and 10. Right. When you have that, that Psalms 30, 137 and 8, drop it. We're, we're just a little bit over the time, so we're going to run through these last precepts, and then I'm going to hand the class over to Officer 50, Darash. Psalm 137, it's the book of Psalms 137 and verse 8. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Right, so, so when, when Christ and the angels come to destroy the daughter of Babylon, America, and and we're being we're being placed into the wilderness, and we're being taken up by the chariots. We're gonna be happy because Christ is gonna reward them how they how they treated us. Right? They're gonna be killed for killing us. Right? That that's that's that that's what that's what we pray for that's what we changed our life for that's why we we came into this school because we were tired of being oppressed we we're at rock bottom we were tired of being lied to we were tired of being told love the people that hate you that utterly hate you they they don't love you like if you don't like i'm not suggesting get into a fight with no oppressor but every time i ever got into a fight with an oppressor they called me nigger not because I did something wrong. That's just because, like, like they just, that's what they did. They hate us, right? So happy will we be when we get to repay them for, for how they served us, when we, when the Most High gets to reward them for how they served us. 
right? Christ, Christ died for us because we're in hell. We're the ones going through 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 this pain, through this through the slavery. We're the ones that's being oppressed. Who has Matthew 15 and 24? Drop it when you get it. We're gonna show you who Christ died for. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right? So Christ, that's out of Christ. That's in red. That's in red right there. And anybody who knows this book, they know the words in red is the words of Christ. And Christ said it himself. I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, because Israel is the one that's going through the slavery. Israel is going through oppression. Oppression. The other nations don't need to be saved. Saved from what? They damn near run the world. They own every store in our in our in our community. Right? We can't go to Chinatown and put up and put up a Jamaican restaurant. They won't allow it. Right? We don't own. We can't even own any of the buildings on 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 Eglinton and Oakwood. We just got to pay rent, and when the rent raises and they raise that rent and keep raising it, you're going to find yourself out of a business. They're going to tear down those buildings, and you're going to see condos. There's already a condo being built at Eglinton and Oakwood, right? So, so that's why we're in the ISUPK, and we know that keeping the law of the Most High, that he's going to send Christ and the angels to avenge us, right? And we're going to have... Are slave masters in slavery, right? So someone who got Revelations uh, 13 and 10? When you got it, read. Another one, come. Trooper Shariwan, you got it? Another one, come. Salakia, Trooper Yirad, get me Revelations 19 and 13. Uh, Trooper, Trooper Shah Yuan, you can read that when you have it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Right? So, so, so. The slave masters put us in, in slavery, they're going in slavery. The slave masters killed us with the sword, they're going to get killed with the sword. Today, the sword is the gun. It's on the side of every police officer who goes through and just shoots black, Hispanic, and Native American men. It's on the side of them when, they're, when they were beating up uh, the Native brother who I believe he was... There was a native brother who got beat up. I think he was this was in Montreal. We're gonna we could we that's probably somewhere in in one of these classes. You check you check uh No Cowards Canada and, and watch those classes, check out those tapes. There's some pretty good information in there, and you'll see a native you'll see a story about a native brother being beat up by police. Right? So the ones that led us into captivity, they're going into captivity. And that's the patient of the saints, the sons and daughters of Israel. Right? Uh, Trooper Yirad, you have that? You ready? Father, the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Right? So, so you got to think about, like, and he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. A vesture is a garment, right? And that was dipped in blood. Think about if you dip a garment in blood and how much blood that is, right? Even though this is metaphorically speaking, it's telling you what Christ is going to do when he comes back with the angels. We know the word of God is Christ, right? This is basically showing you what he's going to do. This is the revenge that 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 set for our that this is the revenge that the most high is going to take out on our oppressors for what they did to the apple of his eye to the his saints to his priests and prophets right so with that said that's the end of the history class uh, clap it up right quick
tune in, tune in next Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, for for the next history class on Tuesday, Officer Darash is going to be doing the Brotherhood class on Wednesday at 7 p.m. on this same channel. He's going to be doing the the law class on on Friday. He does the at 7 p.m. All these classes start at 7 p.m. on Friday on this same channel. He's going to be doing the Rock One Kodash class where you get to learn your. Get to learn your the tongue your forefathers spoken, right? On Saturday, we're going to be doing, we have the Sabbath service, 12 to 1 on this channel. Don't forget, if you're Haitian or you speak French, check out ICPK Quebec on Mondays, I believe from 6 p.m. If I'm 6 p.m. or 5 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. And on Wednesdays on that same channel, ICPK Quebec, I believe their class starts uh, at at 6 p.m. as well, right? So with that said, I'm going to hand the class over to Officer 50 Darash. All right, Madam Visual, we're going to do the uh, security announcements. All right, these are the ISBK security announcements. We're at the ISBK starting at 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. Move for new brother and sister. When a new brother or sister comes to the school, they're off for six months. They are to be familiar only. They are here to shed themselves with the world. If they need transportation, the teacher will arrange it. After six months, if a brother or sister has an interest in a particular person, he or she must get permission from the head to speak to a brother or sister. There is another six months in which the brother and sister will court each other. After the six months period, the brother and sister will get permission from the head to marry. Tithes, which is a commandment, Numbers 18.21, Malachi 3, verse 8 to 10, means 10th in the Hebrew, Ma'ashara, 10% of every penny of, every, of any increase the Lord gives you, give to treasury department or teacher. Priest fund, we will offer it for priests, not mandatory, whatsoever amount you would like. Up quote, upcoming holy convocation, Announce, uh, so like it. Um, the next uh, holy convocation is uh, Purim, 14th day, and the 15th day of the 12th month, all right, which is uh, Thursday, February 25th, and Friday, February 26th, 2021. That can be found in Esther 9 20 to verse 31. Um, check the ISUBK website uh, for any updates, www.isubk.com. Or speak with their a camp leader officer five thousand a bond. Uh, if anyone wants to be a trooper in the school, start wearing all black boots, shirt, headband, or scarf. Uh, with that being said, my visual I margin. We're gonna do the uh, we're gonna we're gonna do the Lord's prayer. Salakia, so sir, wapaniyaha kadama means turn and face the east. Right, Bashamayan, <laughs> How is shine now? How is shine now? Right. 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 Right.
Yahweh. Yahweh. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us. Our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. I lead us not. Well, he does not into temptation. Into temptation. Deliver us. What deliver us from evil? From evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory. Forever so be it. Forever so be it. All right, sir. Which means turn. All right, we're gonna salute. We're gonna salute to the uh, Akim and the Akwathian. All right, men of Israel. I am Adam Shabbat. Well, I mean, I know people have their thoughts. Y'all, Bashim, y'all, Shabbat Shalom. Y'all, give me a All right, man of Israel, we're gonna give a salute to the sisters, the Aquathian. Man of Israel, I'm Adim Shabbat. I'm Adim. Barak. Y'all, Shemar. Y'all, give me a talk. Bashim, yes.